The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you normally talk around the pit. As always, I'm joined by Messy Mike. Hold on. Hi. How are you, sir? You lost some weight. Did I? Don't yeah, you good. look very small to me. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> you are remote. Yes. Yeah, doing it from the house today. Right. Um, you know, the, everything going on, rather be, you know, safe than sorry. Um, it's a little weird, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. But um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. So let's try and uh, let's try and get a good show going today. All right, all right. Hang on one second, there, Mike. I have I have to, I have to get this out of my system. Ben, turn your mic on. Yes. <laughs> Hello, young Ben. Hello, John. I wanted to do that since you started, <laughs> but now I said, "Young Ben, it's now out of my system. I'm good to go." No worries. Yes. Nice comment last week. You had me in hysterics on the knife fight thing. I gotta say, are you Wolverine? Because you heal real <laughs> I, quick. I heal quick. You heal real quick. Yeah. Kind of concerns he's, me. Yeah. He's rocky. <laughs> yeah, because it was all cut straight down past, like right here, and down to here. Oh, that's brutal. So it, you know, I still got a little on the eyelid, but. <clears throat> Can't see anymore, so it's all good now. No, you know. Onward and upward, John. <laughs> as 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 our friend Kent says, my new theme song is I Fought the Wall and the Wall won. <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, stay with the local. Um, doing a uh, Hair of the Dog local from uh, Rockingham Brewing today. So keeping it local, helping the breweries out. Nice, nice, nice. So today we got the boys from Tribal Fire Grill on. Aaron, Trip, are you there? Hey, hey, yep. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Good. He's going great. Excellent, excellent. This, Yeah, this is the first time with technically three people uh, coming in. So this is yeah. this, this is unchart, uncharted waters. Well, but hey, it's working. Right now, I think, too. Cool, cool. So <clears throat> what's up, fellas? How's everything out in Indiana? Hey, Indiana, we're uh, hunkered down, but uh, moving along here. Nice. Nice, nice. So, boys, tell us, we found out about you guys a couple weeks back from our friend Brian Crawford from Lone Star yep. Barbecue Supply right. uh, Pro Shop, right. and he was telling us about the travel grill, and we, um, you know, we looked it up and went, oh, we have to contact these boys. Absolutely. You have quite the interesting uh, setup going here. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, very new to market, but uh, it definitely has a very unique uh, spin on the grilling and uh, something that we think is going to really catch fire, if you would say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what kind of a grill is it? Because, you know, looking at the pictures of it, you kind of have a combination of a few yeah. things going on. You have like a flat top, almost griddle type surface. Right. You have the rem um, the middle insert where you can go over live fire. Right. You also have that adjustable um, inlet. Yeah. Great. So you kind of have that Santa Maria type Absolutely. thing going on. You got a whole lot of things in all wrapped up in one. In a very compact, unique platform, you know, you've got that 360 degree round surface. So we call it grilling in 360. So people can gather around, cook together. And we believe that cooking together brings people together. So that's really uh, the, the, what we were after when we designed this. And uh, yeah, you've got flat, flat top surface griddle cooking. You've got live fire cooking. You've got adjustable temperature control. All the things that you kind of combined what's out there in the market kind of in one package. 
Nice. So, um, so how did how did you guys come up with the idea of this? Well, you know, going back uh, a year ago or so, you know, I really wanted a, a uh, we really what we did, we started in uh, the commercial smoker business, Game Changer Smoker, GameChangerSmoker.com. Which looks smoker, awesome, by the way. Excuse me? Which looks awesome, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we've been working with that for more than five years, Trip. He's our culinary chef. Uh, we're into a lot of the food service universities and, and so on. So we've been working in this space, in this market, made a lot of good contacts, friends, ambassadors uh, in this market. But, you know, going back a year ago, I really was looking for something live fire uh, and something uh, I was looking for a griddle and, um, you know, just looked at what was out there. And there was really nothing in this space where we could have live fire griddle at a at a reasonable price and so one thing led to another working with trip working with our guys here uh adam and chuck in my office and um it was you know aaron, one thing up with tribal fire yeah like i would say aaron or one of our catalysts was the the going to our first sca state cook off association right. and seeing these guys in action and we were like guy we could probably do a better job with a grill and that's kind of where this whole process got going. If we we're going to go compete, we wanted to compete on something we'd already um, that we we owned and we created. So the that was again, I think a big part of the show was the motivator of going to these events and showing off a system that we created. And and what we did with that is uh, the ability of of controlling your heat with direct and indirect heat, which we felt wasn't there in the marketplace. So um, with, with this um, grill, so is it kind of like the Santa Maria, you can lift it, you know, you can raise yeah, it. Yeah, and not only really that, it goes left or right or mm -hmm. up and down, vertical or horizontal movement. And it's on a post. So imagine a swing arm. And on the end of the swing arm can be multiple items. So we can have either a, a grill grate mm -hmm. uh, for competition, which we do have a, a grill grate package for folks to go and compete on. Um, and, and that's awesome. But then there's also where you maybe you just want to have a hotel pan or a pan holder. So you can put your hot Mac and cheese indirectly over the heat, or you could have it swing out and have your cold condiments there for building off of. We just kind of like the fact that when you were grilling, you weren't forced to move your steak from the heat. You were able to move your entire grill grate off of the heat and we felt it controlled your your temperature which is the real driving i mean visually it's nice to have a perfectly grilled steak but it's also if it doesn't come out of that medium for sca events then you know you're gonna not you're not gonna win <laughs> so we wanted you to have the best chance of winning by really controlling your your temperature that to that degree literally too what what happens in springing off that with trip is with these swinging arms and different accessories what we have here is an action station an action station that you can build around what you want to do whether that's competition whether that's food service whether that's on at your home working cooking with your family you've got an action station that can work with what you want it to do and and at a at a uh, uh, a height that's very easily accessible i'm not bending down cooking lower below my waist i'm at tabletop height so it's very easy to measure your temperature, to flip your steak, to do what you want to do. It's a, it's a true action station. So, um, so it's a 50 gallon drum. Um, so, you know, what's, what's different between that and like a UDS smoker? Um, I know, you know, the whole circular, um, cooker, the up and down, the, the side to side, um, right. where's the actual charcoal go in the, um, barrel? So also with that, it's not necessarily only a barrel system. We have several setups. You can have, we have a commercial uh, stainless um, base. We also have a more portable collapsible stand that, that, your, um, that your top can go on. And then also the barrel look. So we know that barrels are really hot. People like them. And that's where we initially went in our marketplace but then we also figured out how expensive they are to ship uh people wanted to have something a little easier to throw into the car for getting out and camping and 
or, or going to events and, and doing that uh, type of thing. So we have several looks now. It's not just the barrel, but really what it is, um, they all work on the same premise where a, um, a, a fuel basket where your charcoal or hardwood would set just inside of, of the top of the rim of either the barrel or the, the quarter barrel that fits on top of the stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, then it, from there, it's all universal with the same type of flat, um, the, the circular, almost like a donut shape uh, that sets on top. So you have that, that fire basket sets right in close proximity of that top flat surface. And that basket where that fire is hanging right off the rim of that barrel or quarter barrel or whatever it is. Okay. Okay. Nice. You're you're able to set it up in zones as well. Um, so you know, just like on on any any type of kettle style grill, we we can have hot zone to the left, cooler to the right. How you stack your fuel, but really you're you're controlling your heat with your vertical and horizontal arm swings. So there's there's a lot of different variables when it comes to to taking your control of your grill. Now are they are they customizable? Can you um you know can you change the the look and you have your company name on them? Um, you know. Yeah, we're really fortunate. We have um, a lot of great ambassadors, people that are already working and grilling on on the tribal fire. One of them is Richard Lane. He's kind of known in the barbecue world as a a pit uh, grill um, uh, artist with his 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 ability to paint on on these types of drums so we do have that service where you can um, have your own company logo pl- placed on a barrel but we also have uh, where you can customize a grill for your company that would go on, on the plate on the front of of the other of the stand version as well uh aaron and uh, aaron can tell you a little bit about some of the stuff that we're developing in in-house uh really unique uh grills like the one that we're doing for friends of ours um i don't know if i want to let the cat out the bag too much but <laughs> Not quite yet. We're not quite ready, but man, there's going to be some neat things. Uh, you'll see it on our website, tribalfiregrill.com coming up, some custom designed units. They're going to be phenomenal. I mean, so corporate organizations, you name it, we're going to custom design it like nobody else is doing. Nice. 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 <clears throat> uh, we got a, we got a question in the chat room from Aaron Perry. Uh, do you need to season the grill? And part two, uh, how would you go about cleaning it? Any, you know, special processes mm-hmm. or what to use and what not to use? Well, I think you treat it a lot like cast iron. Uh, but yes, you do need to site season it when you when you get it, uh, uh, heat it up, oil it, and then also, uh, you know, I like to use and, and Trip can add his input here, but I I like to steam clean it, a wet cloth you know, does a really nice job cleaning up that flat top after I'm done using it. Right. And, you know, it gets so flipping hot um, when you go to, to refire it after it's already been seasoned, really after the first use it's seasoned, like Aaron said, just put a little oil on it. Bacon. <laughs> maybe some bacon doesn't hurt, but you know, <laughs> which we've done plenty of, but I'll, I'll tell you like uh, once it's, once it is seasoned, I gotta be honest, I'll, I'll clean it as well as I can at the end of the night, but it's, you know, the end of the night, the next day when I fire it back up, it gets hot. I'll put a little bit more oil on it, scrape it off. And then it's good to go with a little steam rag wipe. It's, it, it, it does clean really nicely and easily because of how smooth the surface is. You know, think about a hibachi when you go eat a hibachi and how they come out and clean the table afterwards. Same premise. You know, you're just going to use that, um, that hot steam to, to, to drive it clean. Nice, nice. Um, you know, Steve Ray, and, you know, I, I think we already went there, but, you know, where did the idea of the grill come from? So, you know, were you guys, you know, hanging out and this just came to you, or you figuring, you know, a little, little bit of everything? Oh, yeah, you know, over the over the years with the game changer smoker trip and I we we've hung out a lot cooking a lot um, and uh, we're always looking for something I mean and tribal fire grill has been one of the best most fun things trip and I's done I mean all the time he's on one side I'm on there having a good time 
we talk, we converse. And so some of this stuff just comes right out of that stuff, these developments with the tribal fire. But really the, the, the beginning of it was just, hey, I was looking for a griddle for my porch. I wanted live fire. I look at what's out there. I see things for $2,000. I see, you know, the gas side of things. I really see nothing in that middle ground. And so the wheels start going. I, you know, and then I just start, I have a great team, Trip, Chuck, uh, Adam, you know, and we bounce things off each other. Bass, one thing leads to another and, and the development comes. Yeah. We, yeah, we got a lot of great feedback from our, our, our recently, uh, we, had, we created an ambassador team of some of the best barbecue people in the country. And um, like I said earlier, Richard Lane's on that team. We have Robert Sierra. Um, there's just a whole whole slew of guys that are, are constantly calling and giving us feedback almost on a daily basis or talking about things that we want to develop down the road. Like eventually you'll see a rotisserie go on onto this grill. Uh, maybe it'll be a pizza box or a steam box or, mm-hmm. you know, we're developing up the lid right now. And so there's all the cool thing about the grill is the more you play on it, the more you come up with new ideas or new concepts that maybe you or Aaron and I didn't come up with, but you know, it's pretty cool to have that, that feedback. And it's just same, same thing happened with us with the game changer smoker. We, we thought it would be people out there making it, just using it for barbecue. And, and next thing you know, we got, you know, some of the top chefs in Chicago calling us up and tell us how they're cold smoking their creams to make marshmallows or their, or we have other people doing stuff with seafood or dehydration and, and cold smoking cheeses. So um, we we figured out through trial and error how much more uh, you know valuable an item is once we started opening it to public opinion. And that's what's happened with the tribal fire. Now that you know we've gotten all these great people, they keep coming back with better ideas or things. So that's why that's why the why it's so good as is because all that work's gone in on the front end to make sure it it, it, work, it functions like it does nice nice now i know it's based off of the the uh, 55 gallon drum but i know on your the base package you have mm-hmm. it says all you need is a uh, 22 inch barrel so could you use that base package on like a weber kettle you know, I think if you hard mount the Weber kettle, it works. Um, it, the top is fairly heavy. So, you know, the Weber legs aren't the most sturdy. Uh, I've not tried that on an exact Weber, but I do believe that the, the sizing is all there for pretty standard 22 inch stuff. So, but if you hard mounted a Weber kettle, I think it'd work perfect. It's like on a performer style okay. where it's stationed on a table. Yeah. Top. That would be that would be effective, and then I also we, we get a lot of feedback from people who are like the sticks drums. They they work perfectly on other smoker drums. So now you can convert. Maybe you already have a drum sm- smoker out there. Now you can convert it to a live fire grill. So that's been pretty cool to get that feedback from our ambassadors how they're um, up in their game with their with their drums they already have. Nice. Now you guys, uh, so you guys partnered with SEA, you partnered with Grove Rates, you partnered with B&B Charcoal. Um, so are you giving, um, you know, if, if an SEA event is won using the Tribal Fire, are you, um, you know, kind of like how other girl companies um, give you kind of like a, you know, Bound, a, like a bounty award? Bounty, yeah. Are you guys doing anything like that right now? Uh, you want to answer that here? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, right now for a, a win at an SCA competition and a shout out, we're going to give a thousand dollar bounty if the, if you use a tribal fire to win. Perfect. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You know, we, we believe that it's going to, um, uh, it, you know, it, it's a winning combination and, uh, we get more guys, we get on it, get out there in the SCA world with it. Uh, the more people are going to love it. So uh, definitely uh, we want to support SCA. We want to support the guys using tribal fire at these SCAs. Nice. Now, how much, how much does the whole package um, weigh? So if you were to travel or take it somewhere, what's, you know, what are we looking at for a weight? If you got our, uh, our breakdown uh, barrel. Now, the one thing I'll say is 
This is a durable made in the USA product. Okay. It's made right here in Indiana. Um, so, you know, we fabricate it in our shop. It's sturdy. It's going to hold up. So the base, uh, the base is running about uh, a breakdown base. All the pieces about 60 pounds, but it's kind of, that's two different pieces. So you're 30, you know, you're 30 and 30. And then the top, it's about another, you know, 25 uh, pound item uh, that comes with a, you can get it with a cover and that cover actually kind of acts like a bag. You can kind of put it in that bag, pick it up, and, you know, load it. Uh, so it's, it's, it breaks down in a few pieces and, and loads right in. Nice. And, and what, what type of, um, like, what do you see people cooking besides, you know, steaks? What do you, what do you see people cooking on it a lot? Uh, what are your ambassadors saying? Um, I mean, like, you know, I feel like fajitas, um, you know, burgers, like smashed burgers on the side. Um, you know, what, what, what other uh, cooking ideas are you getting? Yeah. Trip, go ahead. Yeah. So, hey, uh, so there, there's uh, one of the attachments we didn't talk about is the, the insert for a wok. So we have a, a raised center grate and you have, and then a wok can sit on, on top of that. And, you know, right in, Right over that center fire hole, we've we've uh, gotten temperatures over 700 degrees, so it, it'll it'll get blazing hot. So you can imagine, like once you put a little grapeseed oil or a little uh, sesame oil, and, and then you start dropping product in, it gets sizzling. And so you can make really killer stir fries, stir fried rices, any any type of those Asian dishes. But even beyond that, you know, you can fry your uh, chicharrones, your pork skins. You can do um, you can do uh, stuff like popcorn in the wok. So we'll we'll pop popcorn and do kettle corns. Give out and at a food show, it's great because we can just pop it up and we'll bag it up. And it's a, it's a like like uh, Aaron was saying earlier, it's an action station. So what we find is is the minute anybody gets going on that grill, it's it just people flock to it. And you can easily assign out tasks. So if we're making fajitas, maybe one person's in charge of the tortillas and putting the cheese on, another guy's doing the onions, and another guy's over here doing this saute stuff. So you know, it's all random. Um, what what kind of what kind of stuff that goes um, you know can go on at a food show? But I can tell you the the different the different foods that people are coming back to us with are is pretty cool. Yeah. Few weeks ago, we did fried oysters on it. That I that was awesome. So you yeah, know, Trip and I, man, we've we've uh, that's what a lot of what we do is we'll uh, at our events we will do a little bit of cold smoking of our protein, maybe some brisket in the uh, the uh, smoker, and then we will fry it and and put it in tacos and sample out little street tacos for people. And uh, man, we do that all day long, and we can just kill it on the tacos. Well, that sounds awesome. Well, John, tell a uh, <laughs> freaking Dave. It's a lot of sneezing and coughing going on over there. <laughs> uh, Where? That's not me. What are you talking I don't about? know. It's in the chat. Jesus. Oh. Now, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not sick. Um, oh, so, yes, you are. Mentally, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, where have you guys, um, like, have you partnered with the, like, have you talked to the MBBQA yet? Like, um, where, you know, where, where are you guys setting up this um, for events? Um, you know, besides the SEAs, um, you know, kind of just tell people, you know, where, where, where well, you recently we were the Houston, started. you know, recently we um, debuted at the shed for an SCA event, but it was more yeah. than that. With, uh, Brad? with Brad. Yeah. Okay. And so Brad's one of our ambassadors as well. He and, you know, he has a, a tribal fire grill and a big, big advocate, good friend of, of us. Um, with Game Changer as well. Good for you. Uh, yeah, but then from there, we went to the Houston Rodeo, and uh, that was a really cool. We got to hang out in the winter circle with Op Operation Barbecue Relief. Those guys uh, took us in and let us sample out uh, tacos and to everyone in that for the couple of days, and that was a lot of fun. And then really this corona thing kicked in and shut us all down. Um, all of our food shows, the M MBBQAs looking like, I don't know. We that's were supposed to happen. be at Hogs for Cause. And Hogs that, for yeah. Cause was yeah. another one we were going to. We we, we really booked um, through Memphis in May, and now, you know, it's like just like the rest of us, we're on hold, yep. waiting to see when this is going to – 
let up so we can get back out there. But as soon as it does, you can guarantee that we'll be putting it out on our social media where you can find us. Um, yeah. I think once the SCAs fire back up, we'll figure out which ones we want to go to. And once we know with some assurances that we're back on track and going. And when we have several ambassadors who will be out at these events, and then we look, we look to be at uh, food shows. Um, you'll see us uh, at, at like the National Restaurant Association show. We'll have to reschedule for next year. But those are the type of places you'll find us at these barbecue events. We'll look, be out there, you know, sampling food and meeting people and hopefully striking up some interest. Nice. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But really, the proof's in the pudding with the grill. I can tell you, like, until you get on it, you don't realize how much fun it is. And, and like I said, once you have your friends all circled around and you're all taken, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to fight for a position. Like with a, a grill at home is very one dimensional. You walk up to it, your backs to everybody. You're the one person with a spatula. You're cooking for everyone. And just like anyone else in this chat or probably listening, you want to be the guy with the spatula in the, in the hand. You want to be the guy grilling. So this really gives the opportunity to share Right. Uh, and that's what I love is the ability for me to put my son on the other side and teach him a little bit about grilling. We're face to face, we're interacting. And I think in this time of uh, being corn, you know, inside and not able to go places, well, the family unit is still together. And it's like, hey, you know, let's go have a little bit of fun grilling something. You know, we just had the this last weekend stay in, grill out. You know, that's what yep. we were doing. We had a great time doing it. And it, it kind of, we forgot a little bit about what was going on in our world just for that moment that we could share that together. Oh, abs absolutely. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I absolutely love, um, you know, when my, when my kids, you know, sh you know, their attention gets into the grilling a little bit yeah. and I can, you know, get them in there. You know, my son, you know, he's, he, he's the hot dog master, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he loves getting it. He, you know, I got his, yeah. his own little one and, you know, it was a little set of tongs, and he's flipping back and forth. He's having an absolute blast about it. But, nice. you, you know, hitting to the point of what you just said, especially in the times right now, these are times that none of us have ever experienced. Right. You know, and it's, there might be a few who are hanging on from the, what it was, the Spanish flu was the last thing that, mm -hmm. something like almost to this magnitude that, you know, people remember. That was 1919, you know, but... That, that time we have now with the family as a, almost, I hate to say it, forced to be as a unit yeah. to slow down from our normal society, you know, yeah. put the phones down a little bit and do some stuff. Yeah, you know, we, I, we're getting into the, um, like the, the, the remote learning, the homeschooling type thing. Right. And, you know, that's a, that's a whole different, uh, that's a whole different ball. Uh, ball game for me, you know, one kid's already suspended, the other's on the verge of expulsion, and one of the teachers has been fired for drinking on the job. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. it's, <laughs> you know, but the fact that you can get out for a little bit, fire the grill up, and, you know, just forget what's going on. Get a little bit of normal back into your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, the, and with, the, uh, with the SCA stuff, um, you know, I've done a couple of um, SDA events, you know, through the MBBQA. And, uh, you know, you're sitting there on a PK grill um, or a Weber. And, you know, like what you guys are saying, you're kind of waiting for your turn. Um, you know, you got the top flipped up or whatever. And with this, I feel like, you know, you could have three or four people kind of, you know, all at once hanging out, yeah. talking, having a good time, putting your steak on. Um, and, you're, you know, you're kind of just, it, it, it's a party. Yeah, you know, so basically like, this is a party. To, you know, when when yeah. trip when trip goes to flip the steak, I'm standing there. I brush it and spray it, and then he yep. puts it back down on the grill grate. You know, we're mm -hmm. working. We're a team. Yep. Now, uh, speaking of of the grill grate, size wise, is that you know, is it room for one steak or is it two average size or? We're using the uh, fourteen and a half inch uh, grill grate. We've had some other sizes on there. Um, and we, we've had it to where we're, we're working two steaks at a time. Uh, but generally it's one steak, but two, two can fit on it. And, okay. And Brad, Brad's a great guy, Brad Barrett. 
Great guy. Yeah. yeah. He's been really great and supportive of us. We went through a lot of different sizes of grill grates before we came up with this size. And the reality is, is when you compete, you're really only going to grill one steak at a time. Yep. So they give you two, you can screw one up, but really you're going to be focusing on one steak at a time. Mm -hmm. So we felt it didn't need to be any bigger. If you're at home, like when I'm grilling here at home, I can fit three, three or three ribeyes on there side by side, you know. Uh, but again, it's um, that was designed specifically for competition, that look. And uh, but the cool thing about it is, again, you know, the, the people that are forced to have a stationary grill grate on the other grill types, they don't have the versatility and the, the ability. If you're if you start hitting your temperature really fast and you're having to move that steak off of that grill grate well, with this setup that we have, your grill grate moves off of the fire. We can either take it up higher for a little still have heat or completely off of this swing off completely off of the top of the cover and um of the, of the lid area surface area you know and because those grill grates are made from aluminum they immediately drop in temperature quickly so you don't have to worry about it over searing which it's not really a problem but uh you don't have to worry about whether you're going to mess up your grill marks you're going to reach, reach your steak target temperature because yeah. you can control it yeah. Right. But, but also, like you were saying, too, um, you don't have to touch your steak. So like another grill, you know, you lift it up, you know, you got to move it. Now your marks aren't going to be what the judges are looking for. Yeah. And right. that's that's huge. Right. You know, that's huge. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. you can, and then with the flat top, you could even finish with a with a quick little sear both sides, you know, and yeah. get that mallard reaction across the whole steak. So a nice little crispy crunch across the whole steak. So there's a, there's versatility there, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Even for like home cooking, you know, I, I really love that flat sear surface. It's, you know, we all grill on, grill our steaks on grills traditionally with the grill grates and what have you, uh, or grill, just grates. But the flat surface is pretty awesome for putting a, a, a ribeye on or a tenderloin or I'll take a whole loin and just kind of drape it around the, the lip of that that sear set and just continue to roll it and let, let, let it sear all the way around. And then I can move it up to indirect to finish off to temp that I'm going for. But you know, when you're able to sear an entire piece of the meat, the entire surface of the meat versus just strips, it does bring a lot more flavor to the meat. And you're and so that's very unique, I think to our grill and also just the ability of, of being able to, not only have your your burgers or whatnot grilling, but you're able to grill them along with onions or with some type of peppers or whatever you're going to be doing, saucing. You know, maybe if you want to put barbecue sauce on your burgers and sear it on, it works it's pretty tremendous. And so I've kind of found myself going away from, at home at least, uh, and using more of that sear. Now, now, where can people purchase um, the Tribal Fire Grill? Mm -hmm. But we have a storefront. You can go to tribalfiregrill.com. Uh, you can enter code um, TFG2020 um, in the uh, code when you go to order uh, for a discount. But uh, there is a online store there. Um, we also have, you know, Trip. I don't know. You want to talk about, you know, uh, ambassadors and so forth? Sure. Here. Well, we we have our first uh, our first retail location in. San Antonio, it's Lone Star Barbecue and Supply Store run by Brian Crawford, who's an incredible guy and a super knowledge base for anything barbecue related. Really, if you're in even close to that area, go out there and check out his store, pick up some sauces and rubs um, and ask him a few questions. What he thinks about the tribal fire. I think he will tell you what we're telling you. Um, when you get on it, it's hard to get off of it. We, we love it. It's um it's not only just a great grill for grilling, but I think what Aaron was getting to is it's a great grill for socializing. Fine. When you're yeah. standing there with your son and his son's home from school, from, from college, um, and, in your, and it's hard, sometimes hard to talk to people, you know, but when you're preoccupied or you have uh, something going on, like you're flipping a burger and you're, the person across from you is toasting the buns, maybe the conversation flows a lot easier. I know that some of our best conversations and our best 
Um, brainstorming has been done around the tribal fire grilling and just talking about what can we do to make our businesses better. So that's yeah. not to go on too much, but that's really, it's a one, two punch. It's a great grill, but it's a, it's a great social cir- circle. Nice. Yeah. We had, we had a, a comment from Charlie Baker from um, pickles barbecue on YouTube. And, you know, he was asking if you guys were more concentrated on competitions or backyard. And I think you, you know, stated it pretty well right there that it's really more backyard yeah. focused as, you know, a family unit or, you know, friends getting together, really, you know, the camaraderie. Yeah, we're, 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 we're creating our network through the competitions, but at the end of the day, we're backyard. That's where we're going with it. But our, but we're going, obviously, like I said, through the competition uh, and, 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 these type of people are the people that the backyard people look to. And uh, so that's where we want to be. Have you approached Jess Pryles with it yet? Who? Jess Pryles. No. No? Uh, hardcore carnivore. She's a um, she's fantastic. Um, she's originally from Australia. She lives in uh, Texas, but she does. Um, she has a product line called Hardcore Carnivore. Okay. Which yeah. is like rubs and supplies, but um, sure. she would be fantastic to uh, get a hold of. You know, she does a sure. lot of live fire cooking and stuff like that. Yep, very good. Nice. Now, um, so when I was reading up about your product, I also came across, and you mentioned it earlier, the game changer. Yeah, that's so. That's a smoker, a cold smoker, a hydrator, a warmer, um, yeah. all, all in one. All in one. And uh, it, it's truly a game changer. And we, de- we developed it for that. We determined that in that commercial space, there wasn't anything with that type of versatility or ease of installation or safety. It's a, uh, it's a system that you can roll into any kitchen. It does not need to be under a dedicated hood. We just evacuate the smoke. And so now we're applying smoke in a wide variety of applications in a wide variety of kitchens and in facilities universities hospitals you name it in addition to the barbecue guy or the restaurants and and so forth so it's really a, a game changer from that perspective uh it's it's easy to control it's consistent because every time you know you don't need to be a pit master because it will produce the same results every time uh, and it's convenience, you know, we're using standard kitchen trays and racks and, and everything. So all you need is a uh, 220 volt single phase plug and you got to evacuate your smoke either through a wall or out the roof or through the, the hood and, um, and you're, you're cooking. And, uh, so, um, it's, um, something that, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people doing a lot of different things. Um, uh, with it and uh, a lot of good success. So, um, unlike a, you know, unlike a like a rotisserie smoker, um, is is that kind of characterized as somewhat like a um, an old hickory um, CTO? It's a piece of it's a cooking equipment. So, so really, there has to be a space between that and the hood system. No. So what happens? Um, it's a little different setup with the with the game changer smoker, and you can see more online at gcsmoker.com. But with with our setup, we have two patents on our smoker box uh, that uh, feeds pellets. So it's a, it, it feeds pellets. We don't derive any of the heat from the pellets. So that's how we are able to cold smoke. The heat is a separate element in the side panel. So it takes an entire baker's rack just to start off, which is 20 full sheet pans. And it goes right into the unit. The door closes. And once it closes, you set your – you can have it uh, – up to nine recipes preset. So say brisket's number one, you got a, uh, you put a probe inside your brisket, you close the door, you can have, gosh, you know, 10, 15, whatever briskets you can fit on a, on a baker's cart in that smoker, okay? So then I press number one on the c- control panel. Uh, that, that'll, then you walk away. It's kind of like the old Ronco set it and forget it, just, you know, where you would, you would just literally walk away and, so the pellets, whatever flavor you want, you know, we'll do a blend of brisket and, and hickory uh, or uh, uh, mesquite and hickory uh, pellets. And then 
they'll burn through. That smoke gets driven up into the chamber by three fans alongside the wall. And so it's a convection and the smoke kind of rotates in that, in that chamber and then out the exhaust. So it's constantly flowing uh, with those fans. Um, so you're really indirectly cooking versus directly cooking where a lot of uh, more traditional smokers have where they'll dry out your products um, with that technique with our convection system. We feel that we're, well, we know we're getting higher yields, which is more money, a juicier product and also a product that's more forgiving when it sets out on a buffet line, for example, because it's, you know, cooked, uh, it's not cooked to death, it's cooked properly. And with that system, so now it knows that when that probe hits 204 degrees, where I like my brisket, it'll drop back down to a whole temperature. So I, I literally leave the kitchen at night, roll the card in, put a probe in. I can, I didn't mean to tell you this, but I can watch it from remotely on my phone through Wi-Fi accessible, the game changers, Wi-Fi accessible. I can lay my, you know, on my couch at home and watch my brisket cook. Know that it, when it gets to 204, it's going to go back down to a hold of 145. I come in the next morning, I'm ready for service. I'm not up all night. I'm not, you know, I'm not a stick burner. I don't want to be a stick burner running a restaurant, maybe on the weekends with my buddies drinking beers. But, you know, this isn't, this is for somebody who's serious about being consistent in their business. We talk about three things in the, in, in the business world of, of, of being successful. And the three C's are, are this, it's control, cost, and consistency. If you can control, you know, control your, your product and how it's being cooked, if you're controlling your cost and then you're being consistent, and as long as you're consistent in this business, you're good. I mean, you can have a consistently average burger, but the day that burger is better, you're going to be letting a lot of people down the next day. So just being consistent, we, we know that we drive a superior product out of that smoker, things that people can't traditionally do also. So because of that heat element being separate, you know, one day, maybe I'll spend the entire day smoking cheeses or next or next day. I know that my fruits and my herbs are going south and I want to dehydrate, you know, my oranges into wheels and my basil and to, to where I can have a dried herb. So, I mean, it's, completely versatile in that regard because in the very next day I'm even doing pork butts so uh, we see a lot of people doing beef jerkies but again you know we get really talented chefs coming to us all the time talking about the unique stuff that they're doing uh, you know cold smoking um, uh, your, your mayos for a, 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 a smoked white barbecue sauce for example fish dips. Uh, yeah. Fish dips, you know, like just smoking fish is incredible because you can pick your flavor profile. Maybe I want to do beech wood uh, or cherry or whatever. You can pick any flavor wood you want. You can buy those pellets online. And some pellets are better than others. We're, we're big fans of Grillers Gold and B&B. &B and, you know, you get, you get what you pay for. But at the end of the day, we're trying to deliver those three C's. It's the control of your cost and your consistency. So. We know we got a, a great product with that GC Smoker. It's G, uh, Game Changer Smoker, gcsmoker.com for anybody who wants to look at home. Awesome. It's, community. it's really not It's not for your home, guys. It's for going out and making some money. Sweet. But if you want to have the coolest smoker on the block, you can't have one on your back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the capacity of um, like that smoker? So how many? Um, 60 square feet. brisket. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it earlier. Well, you can probably get about 300 pounds of pork butts in there. If, if not, you know, imagine what a baker's rack looks like, you know, so, and it takes 20 full sheet pans. So you can lay out a lot of chicken breast or you could probably, you know, four, four or five, four, four or five butts on a, on a sheet pan, but you would have to space them, to give them a little room, but you can get quite a, quite a bit of product in there. Nice, nice. Well, guys, we are running a little late, but we'd like to thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to join us. This was uh, this was fantastic, learning about uh, 
the tribal fire grills and everything. So thank Great. you so much. Um, thank I know you, for you having us. I know you had hit the uh, website earlier, but uh, hit the website again. Uh, where can everybody find you on the website, on social media, things like that? Tribalfiregrill.com. Uh, and, uh, and also then trip or on a social media. Yeah. So, Hey, on uh, Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash tribal fire grill. And also it's at tribal fire grill. And, you know, like really it's hard to, to for you at home, I, I know to visualize what this grill is all about, but I would really recommend if you're even remotely interested, go check it out. It's tribalfiregrill.com and take a look at it. Tell us what you think. And then, for the smoker, for you serious uh, restaurant folks, or somebody who wants a bad, bad looking smoker on your back porch, uh, that's the gcsmoker.com. I'm, I, I'm actually one of those people. I have one of those in my, my shed, and my dad's always hounding me for more brisket. So <laughs> nice, and, uh, nice. And, and Jeff Romero from Texas said he's coming for that $1,000 bounty. <laughs> well, yeah, Jeff's one of our ambassadors. Yeah, looking he's, forward he's, to he's, it. We appreciate Jeff. Nice. All right, boys. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, the doors are always open. Uh, you know, hit us up. You know, new products and whatever, and uh, we'll do this again for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Sir. All right. Thank you guys. <clears throat> uh, you got anything, Mike? I'm good. It's a little weird being out being out of the studio. Yeah. <laughs> it is strange. Get used to. <laughs> Just to let you know, I'm touching everything on your side. Yep. So, you know, I, I might sneeze on it later. You never know. Okay. But uh, um, actually, just a quick heads up. Um, this weekend, this Sunday night at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, I am going to be on Tavern Talk with Jeff Rice, a.k.a. Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue on, channel on YouTube. It's going to be me, uh, our friend Steve Ray from the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show, and I believe uh, Brother Joe from Smoking Joe's Bar Pit Barbecue. Um, that should be a good time. Uh, nice little show there on YouTube. Uh, that's Dead Broke, Dead Broke Barbecue, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Sunday. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, guys, you know, thanks. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the outro. Guys, seriously, be safe out there. You know, we we really don't know what we are dealing with with this virus. So, you know, keep the, you know, try to keep the distance as much as possible. Because remember, you know, and especially for, you know, me included, you know, in being an essential employee, um, being an essential employee doesn't necessarily make your family safe because you're out in this you're coming into contact with everything but just be smart through this whole thing stay the hell home if you absolutely can you know make one trip to the store and that's it stay home so we can get over this stuff barbecue season's coming up we we can't be dealing with this once the weather really gets good but um on that i'm done with my psa on that one we good but, you know, Aaron Tripp, once again, thank you so much. Mike, glad this worked out, you know. Yeah. So. It'll be better next week. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll figure yeah, it all we'll out. Get used to it. <laughs> but on that note, until next week, guys, keep the smoke rolling. Keep the smoke rolling. Attention, cigar smokers, or even friends of a cigar smoker. If you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month. And shipping and handling is included. Go to TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. 
Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at twoguyscigars.com. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.